you could talk a little bit about um, the influences on your leadership philosophy and how you look at uh, you know, your responsibilities presently, not only at Bright Horizons Family Solutions, but also in the larger sense of your life. Um, can, can you think of uh, uh, incidents that uh, in, in your formative years, perhaps, or really any time leading up to, to where we are today? that have had a significant impact on how you see your, uh, your leadership in the world today. First, I should say that uh, my title that is probably most significant above being the CEO of Bright Horizons is being a husband and father of three young children, uh, twins that are that'll be seven in September and an eight-month-old son. So a um, lot happening in my life that, that forces leadership to sort of cross between you know, home and work um, often. Uh, but in, you know, in terms of my own my own background, uh, you know, I grew up with pretty humble means, but you know, with parents who taught me what unconditional love was, and I think that I feel fortunate because I do talk to you know others that I'm close with, and uh, you know, I think more than anything that that sort of parenting style um, that my parents had was 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 key. You know, they sort of allowed me to be independent, uh, to fall down, and were sort of there, um, but. You know, in terms of shaping, I, I think of some incidents in my life that have that have helped to shape, you know, sort of who I am as a leader and how I treat people. Um, you know, I, I think of one particular incident where, uh, you know, again, we had fairly modest means growing up in the sense that, you know, relatively small house, not a place where we could house a lot of people or, or afford, frankly, you know, to give too much um, outside of our family. Um, both mom and dad worked and, and it was, you know, a bit of a challenge. But always, um, I, I was always amazed by my mom's in particular ability to want to give and give and give and give. And several holidays... You to you, no, no, to, to, family, no beyond, to, beyond my family. So, for example, uh, I'll never forget a time where um, during Thanksgiving, um, you know, I found out the day before that, you know, we have this extra table set in our family. And what's ha in our, in our live what then was our living room to do that with. And I find out the day before that she's invited through somebody else, this Russian family that had just come to the U.S. Um, that had sort of nowhere to go. And we had these, what was five, I think it was a grandmother and, you know, mother, father, and, and two children who spoke very little English. I mean, it was almost impossible to communicate. It was painful. Um, but I remember, I remember being, I don't know, 12 or 13 at the time and thinking that my mom was crazy for doing this. <laughs> and, you know, thinking and hearing her explain to me that you know, it's really important to, you know, to be sure that when you find people who aren't, uh, who don't have anything or don't have any place to go, that you extend your hand and you extend warmth, to, you know, to those people. And, um, you know, I truthfully, I think probably for the few years after that, I didn't even think twice about it. I was sort of your typical teenager, mm -hmm. doing my own thing, me first. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I reflect back on that, and I think about, you know, why it is that, you know, why it is that, you know, I feel strongly about giving back and wanting to be sure that, you know, as we become more fortunate with resources, uh, that my children, even though they're more privileged with resources mm -hmm. than I had growing up, that they have sort of a similar approach to wanting to, uh, mm -hmm. wanting to give back. And I, and I think as a leader, you know, my no, I, I think one of the things I've always strived to do is to have people, regardless of whatever level of the company, you know, we're talking about, um, you know, feel they're important and that everybody's sort of together working towards what our, what our end goal is. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, I don't, I don't want to be seen as this ivory tower guy who, you know, who only talks to certain people that sort of carves out, you know, sort of communicates in one way and that I can be open and communicating to people at all levels of the company. So I think in some way that, you know, those, those experiences and the one I gave is one of many um, examples of how um, I think you know my parents had had uh, my mom in particular had had, had made that um, you know had, had given me that uh, uh, that lesson. Kind of a model. Yeah, that for, model for how to yeah. look beyond your own immediate needs and extend your uh, your home to other people. That's right. Which is certainly what um, my take on, on what your company is about. I mean, you're you're really in a unique position. Uh, in the sense that your, your company, your, your purpose, reason for being, is to uh, help grow healthy kids. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's how I. Maybe that's a, a misconstruction. You would probably have it differently, but that's certainly one important outcome of what you do. 
right, is to, uh, is to, is to make it possible for working parents to, uh, to feel good about the care that their kids are getting when they're not able to provide it directly. That's right. And that's, you know, I can't think of a more important mission in the world. Well, that, that's, and that's cultivating the, the next generation of people. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So, you, so every day you have a chance to pursue that with vigor and to be also trying to be an economically successful um, company that, that provides returns for shareholders. So it's, it's kind of a unique role. Well, it is, and I think it sort of all fits together. I mean, for, for both for me personally, between work and home, between work and home, but also in what we do, you know, as a, as an organization. Because when we talk about making an impact, um, when you think about the business that we're in, um, work site childcare, uh, much like the school systems that exist throughout the world. Um, they're socio socioeconomically divided based on the town or location that they live in. We have a different opportunity because we're serving, for the first time in the world, people who work together as children, not people who live together in one area. And so the opportunity with respect to diversity and the level of, uh, you know, both socioeconomic diversity, racial diversity, religious, whatever you want to want to look at, together. in terms of the children and the families that we're serving. Because remember, as much as we are we are helping young children to get the best possible start in life through really good early education. Right. We're also serving that family as a partner because you know, our clients, by definition, are working you know, mostly dual working, mom and dad working right. families. So we need to do things that help them integrate their work in life you know, and, and really be a partner to them. We're not, we're not there to take over their role as, you know, as, as mom, dad, or primary caregiver. We're there to assist them and be their partner and to contemplate their needs. And since we're serving such a diverse population of families, um, our centers really need to be welcoming and celebrating diversity. In a way, there's an opportunity there that's broader than what a community-based you know, um, center would, would have because by definition, most communities, not all communities, but many communities are divided based on socioeconomic terms. Right. So, so, so we have an ability to make a really great impact in lots of different ways, I guess is my point. Uh, from, a, from, a, from a business point of view, we do that in partnership with companies whose interest it is to see their employees have a healthy integration between work and life, to be able to hopefully our companies think that by offering our services, people will stay longer, be more productive while they're at work, you know, all those things. And then in order for us to provide that, in order for us to provide that level of service that, that major companies are expecting where our bar is raised higher because we're getting investment from clients, we now need to go out and find the most talented people who want to build a career in this field um, and, and ultimately become an employer of choice ourselves. We can't help our clients who are hiring us because they themselves want to be an employer of choice in their field unless we're an employer of choice ourselves. And so we've always tried to stand for all those same high aspirations that every employer has. You know, Fortune Magazine, nine times one of the 100 best places to work in the country, Diversity Inc's top 50 places to work, top 10 for African Americans, and all those things that companies aspire to, to do well, you know, we try and be a, a living, breathing example and of that. Are. And yeah, so I, I, I like that. So you're competing in the, in the war for talent. As, as oh, well. we, we, are, we, are, we are competing. That, that is, that is uh, you know, a, a, you, we cannot ultimately deliver the means or deliver on what we're what we're all about without ultimately being an employer of choice. But how do you do that in an industry that is perennially so far down on the wage scale? Well, that's 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 where the opportunity, in our view, comes in. So ultimately, if we can get employers to sponsor our services to some degree, we can then take out some elements of the cost structure that would ordinarily need to be done by if, if we're just relying on what parents could invest in, you know, in care. So if an employer is going to invest in the facility, so they're going to give us the facility in which we operate in, we can afford to pay a little more in salaries. We can give the kind of benefits that people you know, in all fields would like, not, not necessarily the benefits that are the norm mm -hmm. in early childhood. Um, so in some ways, the employer sponsorship empowers us to be able to have some of the attributes that allow us to stand out. Um, slightly better wages, better benefits, you know, those things. But, but it's not just about, as you know well, it's not just about better wages and better benefits. It's about, particularly in our field, when it's low wage and people aren't, even the people who are most passionate about this and ha haven't, gone, haven't gone to school and gotten, you know, two, four-year master's degrees in, in early childhood education, 
they haven't chosen that career because of their ultimately their ability to earn a lot of money. They right. sort of get the fact that it is a field that that ultimately isn't going to yield the kind of remuneration that that, that it should, frankly. Um, but society, obviously, the, you know, that, that's an issue. So for us, it's really building a place where people can feel respected. Um, many times, our society views teachers of young children as babysitters. And, right. and, the, and here we have people who have gone and gotten four-year degrees for something, and their own parents might think that, that, they're, that they've chosen a career in babysitting. And, mm. you know, and our view is nothing can be further from the truth. I mean, you're giving uh, you know, a four-year-old who is in, in, whose brain is wired for learning and, and is just going a million miles well, a minute. I get that. You, know, that, and, that, and, that you don't and so, have to persuade yeah, me or yeah, probably anybody watching this yeah, now how important it is. Yeah. And what I'm wondering is how you compete for talent, when you know, the, again, you know, our society, and I think this is well, this you, is really a tragic aspect of, of our social you know, and economic structure that we don't value people who care for children, and that's historically been true. So, given that environment, are are you, as an organization, are you personally doing anything to try to change that, both in terms of social policy? Uh, as well as trying to you know, bump wages so that you're competing not just against other child care providers, but perhaps in a, in a broader you know, labor market of people, young people in particular, who want to have a, a job, a career uh, that's, that's a calling as much as it is you know, a means for uh, putting bread on the table. I think that um, the answer is, you know, you know, yes, we're doing a lot of creative things in terms of trying to recruit more broadly. I think if you step back from it, the challenge we have is that 97% of the people who work in our field are female. And women have made great advances over the past 30, 40 years. And so the reality is that, um, you know, as women have achieved greater heights, and I'm glad for that, uh, for lots of reasons, including mm -hmm. the future of my daughters. But but um, but women now have great opportunities equal to men, you know, to pursue their their dreams. And 30, 40 years ago, a lot of that those same talented women were going into the education profession, mm -hmm. and that has gone uh, you know down you know considerably over the years. So we're having Maybe, to, the amount the amount of people in general, but because of the large you know female. Um, you know, participation in this field, the total population of qualified talent in our field has shrunk dramatically over the past 20 years. So you'd expect wages to go up then, right? Well, you, you might think that, but in order for wages to go up, you know, you have to remember that ultimately it's fueled by how much a parent can pay or how much an employer is willing to pay on behalf of that parent or how much the government's willing to kick in. Right. So you have three sources of revenue. Uh, potential and the government has not increased their revenue in a long, long time so as a, as a whole. Future President Obama might uh, have an impact on that. Well, I'm all for social policy that supports early childhood education. Mm -hmm. So, so if we have anything to say about it, that would be true. Mm -hmm. But remember, what Bright Horizons has done over the course of 20 years is convinced employers to invest a lot of money in this in what is a social gap in our country because it affects them because it affects their performance at work and their ability to recruit them and their ability to retain them so you, you're not going to get business to spend money on something that they, they, they'll give back the community under under their foundations and do those do that type of giving but with respect to the money they spend out of their operating budget you know you're, you're having to give them something that ultimately they believe there's a payback on and our payback is recruitment retention and you know and productivity but touching on what you said before, one of the beauties for me as, as the CEO of the company, it's a direct connection to what I have going on in my life. Yes. So I feel blessed almost to be able to be, you know, be sort of the evangelist for an issue that is so personal. Right. And, and, you know, at Bright Horizons, um, you know, it's personal, a it's, Personal in what sense? Well, personal in the sense that I'm, you know, I'm really, as a parent, you know, constantly thinking about, you know, what's best for my kids and, you know, what the right sort of first steps in life are, what the right care is. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, we're thinking about juggling, you know, what we're doing with, with our children, uh, you know, who are young. And so, and then we're also juggling work-life balance, work-life integration. You know, how do we, how, how, how do we, uh, yeah, I hate, I don't like the word balance. Good, so, me too. So I, I'm not sure integration is the perfect word, but it's better than balance. Mm -hmm. And so, Agreed. and so, um, you know, it's a badge of honor at Bright Horizons to, you know, to say, you know, you're leaving early because you have a soccer game to coach, or, mm -hmm. or you're going to pick up your children. You're, you're on pickup today. So that's and so those things, those, those things are very legitimate. 
We, we work hard. We expect people to achieve whatever their objectives are, but we have a culture that really, uh, that really values. Um, and, and actually, it would work to your disadvantage if you, if you did it the other way. If, if the sense was that you were sacrificing your, your family on behalf of your work, uh, and that was really uh, sort of clear to people that you were, you were modeling that, um, I think it would really work to your disadvantage as a leader within the company because, uh, because it's so, it's so much a part of our culture. Which isn't typical, I think. I mean, no, obviously, we work. We, of the way yeah, we, we we work with lots of companies, and, and so I, I never I never um, you know, lots of great companies who, who who even do what I'm talking about really well. Um, but it's not you know some of the things that we experience by virtue of who we are, you know, are just are somewhat unique, I think, in the world. But again, getting back to me personally, I think that's uh, you know I feel really um, really great about the the ability to kind of blend it all. Um, going through it at the same time, and besides, I have like eighteen thousand advisors of uh, what's good for young children to, you know, to choose from. Yeah, you know, do, I, you, do you tap to. into them? Uh, oh, sure, sure. All, all, no, I wouldn't. I, as a father, and, uh, I, would, I wouldn't say all eighteen thousand, but certainly <laughs> many of them. And, and we've had our children in our Bright Horizon centers, and you know, our teachers. Your own kids. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, and, and and those experiences were were very important. So a I center mean, director has got his or her. In her charge, uh, the CEO's kids. That's What's right. What's that like for her? That's right. Well, um, if I have anything to say about it, it's not different than any other child. Mm. And you know, we work hard, Suzanne and I, my wife, to you know to be sure that you know we're we're you know we're just laid back and trying to be just like every other parent in the center. Um, you know, you I, I talk to. Well, you you can and you can't be. I mean, I think that I think there are. You know, when, when you're dealing with teachers, um, you know, in classrooms who are, you know, who are young teachers, um, you can help them. You, you, can, you can say to them, like I did on several occasions, look, you know, I know you know the role I have in the company, but, you know, for you, I'm Julia or Sarah's dad. And, you know, I want you to, you know, I want you to treat me like that. And most importantly for them, I don't want any, you know, so, so if you can't, you know, my feeling is if you can't, if you can't get over me in terms of my role, I don't want my kids to be getting anything special or different, you know, in our in our programs. And I, you know, our experience speaks for itself. I mean, we had some great experiences with teachers who we're still in contact with. We saved every one of our daily sheets from from their toddler years, where you get a daily report on everything that happened. And we have files on both Sarah and Julia, and we we created these boxes, the portfolios that our centers gave them. So they have this whole later in life, they'll have this whole portfolio of their earliest experiences and you know at Bright Horizons and you know we got a lot of great feedback on on kind of you know what they're what they're they had a lot of firsts in our in our center's care all children do mm -hmm. and, and the ability for our teachers to sort of articulate that and say hey you know Julie's showing interest in letters you know here's what, some things you might want to do you know or, or Sarah's you know behaving in this way and it's eh, I don't really not the greatest so you may want to you know think about this and all those things happen all the time and, and um, create a really good connection. I mean, for the time my kids are in our centers, imagine my job. You know, I'm, I'm helping my wife do some of the drop-offs on the pickups. So mm -hmm. I'm going into our, our Bright Horizon Center in the morning, dropping off, you know, getting the little certain days where the kids don't want to be dropped off. So you're in, the, you're in that mode, trying mm -hmm. to talk them, talk them into it and, you know, get them settled. Ultimately, they're fine. And then I leave there, and I'm on the phone with investors, or doing some doing some big presentation, or going to see some, going to see a client. And, and what am I doing when I'm talking to investors and talking to clients? Talking about your kids. Talk, talking about Bright Horizons, right. which is a personal experience for me. Right. Well, that's you what know what I mean. So it's, it's, to weave in absolutely, the, uh, absolutely. It's 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 it's, 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 it's completely natural. Business development and absolutely. investor relations. It's and it's, it's, it's it's completely natural. I mean, it's and it's it's completely. Uh, you know, unique. Now, the travel aspect yeah. of my job, of course. I mean, the place where the integration between work and life is 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 uh, not and as as you know as, as purely yeah, integrated, of course, is is, is travel. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and that's and that's something that we try and work out. I mean, I, I for example, we we bought a map when the kids started to get you know old enough, and you know it was this big wooden map, and you could pull out pieces. It was like a magnet. You could pull out pieces of. Um, of each state, you know, and I'd be, and we'd make a thing out of them. Going to Arizona, pick up it as mm -hmm. cactus, you know, we talk all about Arizona. Mm -hmm. And I'd get on the phone with the kids at the night and I'd say, you know, where am I, where's daddy? He's in Arizona. Oh, bring me back a cactus. You know, I'd use my cell phone, take some pictures of, of cactuses and stuff. And, 
you know, it was a bit of an early geography lesson. So, I mean, there are ways to integrate travel, mm -hmm. but at the, at the end of the day, it's the one, I mean, it's, it's the one downside. I mean, there's, yeah. no, there's no sugarcoating that. It's sort of one of those practical, like all parents face, it's one of those practical, you know, factors that you have, right. to, you have to be willing to work through. And, you know, I work through that with, with my wife, and, and uh, you know, that's one of those aspects that have to be negotiated.